Hey guys, how's it going today? Today we're going to be doing a time belt water pump cam seal, crank seal on the 5VZ 3.4 liter. This is a 97 Forerunner. Uh, I've already got the wheels off. You don't have to take the wheels off to do this job. I just like getting the engine a little bit lower. It makes it a little bit easier to reach in to the engine bay. So I already have the coolant drained. So after you have the coolant drained, we can remove the upper radiator hose by doing these two clips. And then after that, we can get the fan shroud out and then start working on getting the drive belts off. To get the fan shroud out there, these, the lower part has these clips down here. Uh, right, there's one. And if you just reach on the inside. You can pull that clip off. And then there's one on this side. And not through those raw, then this can come out through these tabs. And then once that's off, there's uh, two tabs on this side and two on this side. If you can get those from the top. I'll show you this problem down here. Uh, when we go to take the AC belt off, this is your AC tensioner. This is the lock nut and then the adjuster right here. Uh, so when you undo that, it'll relieve the pressure off this AC belt. We'll do that from the top. I just want to show you, when we get to that part, what I'm actually loosening down here. Now to get the fan shroud out, I like to put a piece of cardboard on here, on the radiator, just so we're not getting any punctures in the fins of the radiator. So next, after that, we'll loosen these 12s down here on the fan. Uh, sometimes you can just jerk them by pulling with a, a wrench up and get them to go loose, or you can stick a pry bar in and kind of wedge it between two of the studs to break the nuts loose. So we'll break all those loose and then we'll uh, relieve the pressure on the drive belts and then remove the fan and drive belts all together. So first to remove the power steering belt, there's your pinch bolt right here. So you'll loosen that going through the pulley hole to get to the bolt. And then below that, down here, is a, the lock nut for your adjuster, which the adjuster bolt is behind that. So you'll loosen that nut and that bolt, and then you can, on this back side, you can turn the adjuster out to relieve pressure on this belt. And then I showed you guys how to do the AC one down there. For the alternator, here's your pinch bolt for the alternator. And then below that, down here, is your lock nut for your adjuster. And then your adjuster bolt is back here to relieve pressure on the alternator. And so we'll remove the belts and then these two pulleys right here. Make sure and take note of how these pulleys are oriented. When you 
just take them off so you can get them put back on the same way. Now that we got all that stuff taken off, the belts and everything, we're gonna undo this electrical connector and pop that off. Then we'll take these clips and we can move these off here. After those are off, we'll get the tens for the front cover, which is here, 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 here. Then there's a lower one behind this plug, and then there's another lower one back here behind here. And then this top cover will come off. Now with the top cover off, we can take a 19 and rotate the crank around so we can bring everything up to top dead center. And after we do that, then we can remove this uh, fan plate adapter. So for your timing marks, when you're first setting it up, you'll go to the zero down here on the cover, and then up here on the cams, it's, you're going from, here's your line, and then to that V right there, and your line, and to the V right there. And that's how you know if you're at top dead center. So when taking this cover off here, you take this, the power steering adjuster off, you take that nut off and then you'll take the actual lock nut for the adjuster off, you'll pull this off the back. And a little helpful tip for when you're going back together, it's good to clean this, all these threads on here, and then maybe run it through a few times, get it running smooth, it makes putting the power steering belt back on a lot easier, I'm able to turn this by hand. Now we can get our harmonic balancer off or our crank pulley with the 19. I usually use just a half inch impact, a stubby to break this free. If not, you can use a chain wrench on here to hold that tight and then use a breaker bar to break it. One other option is a long breaker bar under the frame rail and then another uh, another or your chain wrench underneath the frame rail and then a breaker bar this way and then the last one is put a breaker bar under the frame rail and then you have to make sure this is connected here and then you can bump the starter and that will also break it free those are a couple different ways to get that bolt out now you'll get a puller of some sort this is just one from Power Freight to pull the harmonic balancer. Sometimes you can pull them off by hand, but a lot of times they're stuck on there, depending on how long they've been on. But then you'll just use bolts. There's, they're hard to see, but there's a couple holes, threaded holes down here. You'll run the bolt through your puller into that, and then pull the pull, that pulley off. Now with the pulley off, you want to remove this lower cover. But first you have to remove this harness. So there's a 10 here, and then back in here there's a 10 you'll get with an extension. And then there's the, I think, four bolts that hold this cover on, and then this will come off. Now you got the lower cover off, we can remove this washer. Make sure you see how it goes. 
the beveled side will go towards the belt like that. And make sure you get that put back on. Otherwise it will rub through the, the, the cover. So now to take the belt off, well first you want to make sure and double check that your all your timing is still on. That it when taking off the crank fully that it didn't jump time. Your mark back here is like that little dot that's on that that tooth right there and then that little nipple. See that down there? So make sure that's all on. And if that's on, then what you'll do is there's a 14 in here on this idler. Just take that 14 out. This idler will come off and I'll release tension on the belt. And then I'll show you how uh, to compress this tensioner down for reinstall. Because I'm not going to be replacing the tensioner. Uh, customer didn't want the tensioner replaced at this time. Okay, now we want to compress the tensioner. And what we're trying to do, I don't know if you can really see that, is a hole right there. And then this pin is going to go through this rubber part into that hole as we compress it down. And to compress it, we're going to be using this tool here. So we get the part number. And how this tool works is that this goes right between the the water pump and the pulley like that, or in the idler pulley. And then you'll use like a, a, a 16 millimeter wrench on this one, and you'll just turn it and it'll slowly compress that down, and then you can put your pin in and then pull the tool out of the way. So we'll go do that. So now to do the cam seals, we need to get the cam gears off. And what you'll want to get yourself is a tool like this that can hold the cam gear. So you can use a breaker bar on that bolt or an impact gun, whatever you choose. And do that to both. And then we'll use our puller again down here. And there's a threaded hole up here and one on the bottom and we'll pull this pulley off here, and then we can get to the crank seal back there. Uh, after the cam gears are pulled off, there's some tens back here to pull this plate. So we'll pull this sensor off, the cam sensor, and then this back plate, and then we can get to the cam seals. Now that we have the cover and the cam gear and the crank gear off, to get these seals out, you can get a seal puller to pull these seals. But what I tend to do is just get a small flathead screwdriver to get in here underneath this part. 
and then you can just kind of work it back and forth and then pop this seal out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we got the seals pulled out. You want to be somewhat careful that you're not really trying to gouge the screwdriver if you're using that method like I did into this. Because if you put a, a nick in this cam, then the seal's going to uh, leak. No matter what you do, you have to replace the cam. So just make sure when you're going in, you're kind of going at an angle and twisting up against the seal, not twisting it like this where it's digging into the cam. So it'd be like, you want to make sure when you're going in, you're going in like this and up against the seal like that. So you're not really touching the cam. You don't want to be twisting it like this because that's what will put the gouge in there. Now that we have the seals pulled out, we'll do some cleanup, get some of these leaves out of here and all this oily debris. And then we'll install the new seals and then we can move on to the water pump. Uh, to install the cam seals, I just use different size extensions. Try to find ones that got, kind of got rounded edges so you're not gouging into the aluminum. I'll use a shorter one up on the cam seals and then the longer one down on the crank seal. And then just use a hammer just to tap them in. It doesn't take much. Couldn't take me a minute to get the seals. Our parts guy decided to be funny and he ran boxing tape all around all my parts. So I have to cut this apart to get my seals out and then we'll get those seals installed. I like to put a little bit of white grease on the back side of these seals just to help these slide on so prevent any kind of rolling. Now we can move on to doing the water pump. So we're gonna take this thermostat housing off by this 12 and this 12. There's a one below it. We can take this 12 out, this harness will go out of the way. And we can take this thermostat housing out of the way. And you'll get a new thermostat gasket with the Toyota water pump. And then right behind that, there's a just a hose that goes to your oil cooler. We'll take that hose off. And then after that hose is off, we just take the 12s off that surround the water pump and then the pump will come off and then we can clean any gasket material that was left behind.
now with it all cleaned up, we can install our new uh, water pump. So it comes in the box. I'm gonna get your water pump gasket, a new thermostat gasket, and then of course the water pump. This would also be the time to change your thermostat if you're gonna do that. Uh, we'll be putting a new one on this vehicle. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this water pump installed. So we got the water pump installed and got this hose for the oil cooler installed. A helpful hint, if, if these are older hoses, try to get the clamp re-indexed to where it was at. Sometimes if you get this index where it's not in the same spot it was, it'll end up just trickling out. So it's best just to either replace the hose or if you're reusing the hose to get the clip re-indexed back to where it was originally at. And then for the thermostat, we got the new one in the new gasket. You see this little piece right here? That's the, the bleeder for if there's air bubbles. So when you're installing this, you want to have anywhere in between, like, pointing up between the, say, like the 10.30, 11, to maybe like 1 o'clock. So like 11 to 1, anywhere in that location is where you want it. And that, what that does is, when the thermostat's not open, it allows any kind of air bubbles to slowly trickle out so you're not getting a big air pocket behind your thermostat. Alright, so we'll get the thermostat housing installed, and then we can start installing everything else. All right, so now we can start installing the plate that goes behind the cam gears and then install the cam gears. And then we can install the crank gear. Uh, when you're putting the crank gear on, clean up this area, the inside, and then apply just a tiny bit of like engine oil. It'll help prevent it from corroding onto the crank. And then, so if you ever have to go back in there or next time belt, it'll come off a little bit easier. You know, if you got your crank gear and your cam gears back on, make sure that they're set to top dead center. If they rotate a little bit as you're breaking them loose or tighten them, it, you can, this is non-interference, so you can just, don't have to worry, you can just rotate it. But try to go the less amount. So like, if it's here, just go back to here. Don't go all the way around. It will still be fine, but I just recommend this to go the shortest distance. But make sure both cams are on and then Make sure if you look down and your crank still lined up. Double check all your bolts. Make sure everything's good and then we can start putting the belt back on. Now when you go to install your new time belt, the new time belt, if you get one from Toyota, will have marks on it for left cam. 
and then your right cam, and then you'll also have one down here for your crank. So it makes it pretty easy to line up. One tool that most people have around their house are these little uh, binder clips. These help to hold the belt up here when you get it wrapped around so it doesn't pop off. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start down at the crank, line that up, go up around the water pump, keep it nice and taut, go up here, put it on the crank, or the cam line, droop it down around, put it on here, and then slide it over the tensioner and then back around. And then the last thing we'll put on is this idler. Now to get this idler back in here, it can't quite fit because the belt's a little bit too tight. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a 17 end wrench and you're gonna pull, rotate this direction to take any of this slack out that's right here. And then on this one, you're gonna rotate this way to take the slack out where the tensioner is. And then that'll put your all your slack in the belt right here so you can get that idler back on but then after you do that after you get the idler on you want to rotate this back a little bit so when you're done this is all taut the belt all the way through here all through here and then when you get back here the tensioner that's where you want your slack because that's what the job of the tensioner is, is to take up any slack that's in the belt All right, after you got your idler in, double check all your timing marks. Make sure your top dead center here, lined up, here, lined up. Make sure your crank is good. And then also, so, hope there's a line for the crank line. As long as that's all good, as long as that's all good, then just make sure your you know, belts tight, tight, tight. And here's where all your slack should be. And as long as the paint marks line up on all those three spots, it's pretty hard to get this out of time. So after your timing's set, then you're just gonna go ahead and pull the tensioner pin, and then we'll do one full revolution just to make sure everything comes back to top dead center and then we can start assembling. So go ahead and just pull this out. So that's pulled out. And I like to give it like just a little pull up like that. Just to help that tensioner just kind of come up just to make sure that we have no slack in our belt. So now I'm gonna install that lower cover. Well I need to install the that washer, that beveled washer, the the cover. And I'll put the crank pulley on, and then I'm gonna rotate one full revolution. I, if I'm good there, then I'm gonna start assembling back up. But you could, at this point, you could have put your crank bolt in and do a revolution with just the crank bolt, or you can put the, the lower half together. That's, that's your choice.
now that we did our one revolution we'll double check our marks one last time now we're going to be looking at that make sure it's at the zero it is and then up here it's lined up there lined up right there so we're good double check the belt's still tight so now we can start going back together so next we'll be installing the that fan adapter plate and then the upper cover Now we can install these new pulleys, or not new pulleys, reinstall these pulleys, and then install the belt. The first belt you're going to put on is your alternator belt, then your AC belt, and then your power steering belt. And you'll put them all on here, and then you can uh, put your fan on, and then tighten all your belts down. So I got the alternator belts tight. So now we need to do a power steering belt. Uh, AC belt we'll do from the bottom. So I was gonna show you this, how I tighten this, cause it's hard to get a ratchet or a wrench on the back side on that uh, adjuster bolt. So as long as you clean that adjuster bolt, what I do is you just kind of lay your arm across the top of the cover right here and just grab and give it just a good old pull like that. And what you can do is use that hand to pull and use your other hand down here and turn the adjuster and just really reef on this and then tighten that adjuster back there. And you can usually get it tight enough by hand without using any wrenches besides, you know, your lock, bolt, and nut. Now that we got the ace, the, uh, now that we got the alternator belt and the power steering belt tight, we can put the fan trout in, do our upper stuff here, put this hose, upper hose in and the clamps, and then we can go to the bottom, tighten the AC belt, and then put that bottom bracket for the 
fan film. One thing for that bottom shroud piece, these clips, how they get spread apart like that, uh, it's good to bend them back together with a pair of pliers to smash it down. And just grab it here and bend it like that. Get it smashed together. Just like that, so it'll hold tighter, so there's less of a chance of that shroud piece falling off. All right, make sure it starts, and then burp the coolant system. You guys should go out to your vehicle and double check your battery terminals and see if they're all corroded or cracked. And if they are, you should watch my video on how to put these new style Toyota terminals on. I'll leave a link up above. So that's how we do the time belts on the three fours here at Toyota. Hope you like it. Catch you next time.